And both Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. will be in Indy, but just to watch like the rest of us. Neither will take part in drills this week. They're among several big names choosing to be spectators in Indy this week. Four of the top six prospects, according to NFL.com's Daniel Jeremiah, won't take part. That could mean a big opportunity to shine for guys like Roma Dunze, Drake May, and local kid J.J. McCarthy. With that in mind, let's take this show on the beat. Brought to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com with our head coach, Dave Wanstead. All right, coach. All of these guys are deciding that they're not going to do drills at the Combine. How do you react to that when you hear that said? Well, you'd like them to uh, because, you know what, it's more than just throwing the football. Uh, for example, with Caleb Williams or, or a quarterback, it's, it's about, you know, being on the field. We used to love to, when I was the head coach, when I was assistant coach, We'd love to get guys working down on the field with the players, Lawrence, because you could see how these guys interacted with the players. Uh, were they encouraging other guys? Were they, you know, quiet? Did they keep to themselves? How did they compete? Did they follow instructions when you went over the drill? This is how we want to do this. Did they get it? Were they paying attention? So there's more to it than just running or throwing the football. Uh, and I always thought that was important. I mean, the more looks, put it this way, the more opportunities that I have to be around a player, to be with a player, to be talking to a player, the better feel that I'm going to have for them when it comes draft day. That's just human nature. So let's talk about the the face-to-face -face interviews because this is another opportunity for you to get your time with those players. What do you want to accomplish as someone who's coached? When you're talking to a kid in these interviews, what do you want to know? Well, you know, I, I, I've been at the combine 18 years, so I've done it every way you can possibly do it as far as the interviews process. The one that I like the best, I would get four or five plays. You don't have much time, about 10 minutes, and then the horn's blowing and you got to get out of there because they're calling for them and get them to the next team. I would love to put the I'd put together a little tape of about four or five when he had really good plays and four or five bad plays. And we would go in and have a little bit of small talk to kind of get the kid loosened up a little bit. And then I wanted to get right into this film. And I wanted to say, okay, uh, you're a defensive back. You just got beat for a touchdown. What happened on this play? And it was amazing the guy, the responses. Some of them would say, well, you know, uh, you know, they, they they motioned and we didn't get the check in time. Or how about this? Oh, that was a bad call by my defensive coordinator. Whoa, yeah, that's that's a red flag. You don't want this guy on your team. He's blaming the coach. I love the ones that said I had a I made a mistake, coach. I I was focused on the running play and the receiver got past me on a play action pass. It was something like that. So you're trying, and then the same thing with the good. The kid makes a good play. Why did this happen? Tell me the call. What was the defense? What was your responsibility? Oh, coach, we got really good pressure. Our defensive line got good pressure on this play, so I knew the ball was going to come out quick, so I had an opportunity to break on the football quick and get the interception. You know, so you, I, that was the most productive way that I really enjoyed the short interview time that we had with them. Did you guys do anything fun to loosen guys up? Like, was there a putting green or, you know, a checkerboard or anything like that to, to loosen the guys up? No, no, we didn't have I, – I, I never felt like you had enough time. I mean, you know, we'd be talking about your background, and we knew everything. And you might want to if, – if the kid did have a problem, you might say, hey, listen, I, I know you were accused of this or I know you were suspended. Explain to me in your words exactly what happened. When, when in reality, Lawrence, I've already got my police report in my hand, and I know exactly what happened and how it went down, and you just want to hear the kid be honest with you. And, uh, you know, so sometimes halfway through the interview, he'd be talking about football, and I'd turn to him and say, what did you say your favorite drink was again? Uh, alcoholic beverage. And it's amazing how these kids would start babbling. Uh, uh, well, Coach, I don't drink. And, you know, they say that in the beginning, and then halfway through, you get them, and they say, eh, "I really like that. Uh, I like that light beer." You know, <laughs> so I mean, there was little gimmicks that some people play, but 
I wanted to get right to the nuts and bolts and find out what type of person and what type of football player this guy was. He, was he a team player that could fit in with us? I mean, I know that you would have said you would have drafted the guy immediately if he had given you a nice bourbon. If that would have been his call, that would have shown some maturity beyond his years. I would, if one of them said a Bradshaw bourbon, I would have drafted him on the spot. He'd have been my type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Johnson is is out here, and it's tag season. We saw T. Higgins get tagged. There's been some reporting about what Jalen Johnson is looking for. I'd love to know what you thought of the way Jalen Johnson improved from the the beginning of the season to where he's at at the end. Oh, he did a fantastic job. And, you know, he was drafted with that type of ability, uh, with that type of intelligence. uh, And he played up to it this year. Uh, You know, you you just got to be careful. I mean, you know, players a lot of times will play at a higher level in a contract year. I don't know Jalen. Uh, I'm assuming he's a great kid, that this is just, you know, his DNA is part. This is who he is. Uh, but I, I've been fooled a couple of times. You know, guys play big, like I say, and they got the contract here. Then they get the money, and it kind of falls off a little bit. So you got to be careful. Nobody knows that better than than, than Coach Flus and, the, you know, and Ryan Poles and those guys. I hope they sign him. They need him. He's a talented player. He's young. He knows the scheme. Uh, I think he's well respected on the team. So I, sh- those guys are tough to find. They really are. I hope they get them signed. Who should the Bears target in free agency? You know what? I if I was going to pick one guy, I, I like Brian Burns, the big defensive line, the edge rusher from Carolina. And I'll tell you why. The guy's young. I can't believe he's been in the league. But this is fifth year. He's twenty five years old, Lawrence. And this guy, he's consistent. It's not a one-year contract year having a big year. This guy's averaged. I was looking at his numbers the other day. I think he's averaging about nine sacks a season. Uh, And, you know, so he's consistent in what he does. And I don't know if Carolina, you know, I mean, they've got so many holes to fill that with a young quarterback that I don't know if they feel that they're that close. And if they give him the big money – you know, two or three years down the road, his contract will be up. He'll be ready to move on when they're ready to compete. So they, they might be able to stab him. He would be the one. Obviously, Denell Hunter, we all know him from Minnesota. He's a heck of a player. He's just 29 years old. He would be another one, too. But the Burns guy from Carol, Carolina, I just, uh, I, I like everything about him. If you put either one of those guys opposite of Montez Sweat, what do you think that does for the Bears' defense? Well, it, 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 it's going to put some pressure on how they want to block it. You know, I mean, they are they going to turn the protection right now to sweat? Are they going to put the extra blocker in the tight end? We saw that as the year went on, and they were going to, you know, kind of double team or at least bang them to slow them up. And then when you have a guy opposite of him, I, when I was at the Dolphins, I had Trace Armstrong on one side and Jason Taylor on the other. Each of them averaged 13. I think Trace had 14 sacks. Uh, you know, so with those two guys coming off the edge, uh, it creates a lot more pressure, obviously. And uh, and that's what the Bears need. But um, um, it'll be interesting to see. That's what I would do in free agency. I tell you, I've been thinking about this draft thing, Lawrence. And I can't wait till after the combine to study, start studying some of these guys a little closer. But offensive center, and I know we need an mm-hmm. edge rusher, and I know we need, I know we need another uh, receiver, absolutely. But I'll tell you what, an offensive center, okay, is is to my mind priority. Think back last year when when Pat when Lucas Patrick got hurt, and Cody, who's been a heck of a player, a Pro Bowl, he goes in and said we couldn't get the snap. I mean that that's. That's disgraceful for an NFL team. You know, Justin, the ball's on the ground. It's up high. So, I mean, we we need a talented kid at Oregon, the kid at West Virginia. We need a talented young center and and, and then start building a little bit more on that offensive line. There are actually a, 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 some centers in free agency that might help, and definitely the couple of you named that, that are in the draft for sure. We're going to take a closer look at the draft with our guy Glenn Morgan coming up in just a little bit. Coach, as always, I appreciate you. It's great to see you, and I'm glad that we are back in football mode. Combine is here, and we're all ready to go. Yep, it is. And, uh, 
wow, it doesn't seem like the Super Bowl was was yesterday. And here we are. And uh, no, it's uh, it's a 12 month a year deal now. Full speed ahead. And it should be for the money these guys are making and coaches making today compared to the old days. It should be 12 months a year job, at least in my opinion. Coach, you're the best. Thank you very much for joining us. Congrats, you finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.